Thank you, Father Whitlock, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, and the honored guests, and my brothers. This evening, I wish to affirm and honor before you Father Cyril Geis. Father Cyril has been ordained to the priesthood of Jesus Christ for 58 years and has been a professed religious in our province for 66 years. Father Cyril has had a profound influence on both my discernment for the priesthood and religious life, and it is for this reason I wish to honor him. Father Cyril is a man who is deeply rooted in his relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, if we were to picture the image of a flower, uh, his relationship is the root, is, it's the earth that grounds his ministry and the roots that uh, ground his very being as a Christian. Uh, and out of this ground, out of these roots, blossoms a beautiful flower, which is his fatherhood. Uh, and this fatherhood blossoms uh, into a beautiful blossom of petals. Uh, and these petals draw those to whom he ministers closer to himself and through him to the person of Christ and whose person he stands. One of these petals is Father Cyril's example of fidelity to his priestly vocation. Uh, a very poignant example of this. I remember one day, it was probably either end of middle school, early high school, I was attending daily mass with Father, uh, and afterwards he was greeting the faithful, and suddenly there came this call that someone was in the hospital in need of anointing. Uh, and it was like that scene in Fishers of Men, you know, where the priest gets out of his car and runs, except this was real. And not only was it real, this was a 70-some-year-old priest running from the narthex to the sacristy, divesting along the way. And so this could have been just a day in the life of a discalced Carmelite priest, but watching this 70-some-year-old priest run to the aid of a wounded soul created a profound impact on me uh, and on my discernment. Uh, another petal in this blossom of Father Cyril uh, in his fatherhood uh, is his ministry of presence. Shortly after he was ordained, Father Cyril was sent to our mission in the Philippines. Uh, he had many experiences there, one of which he shared with me after breakfast a short while ago. He was telling me how there was this uh, woman who had seen her children eaten by sharks. There was a boat uh, and it had capsized and the sharks had eaten her three children. And all she could do was stare into space and sit and rock. And all I asked him, well, what, Father, what did you do? And he said, well, what, what could I do? I was, just, I was just present to her. But that presence meant the world. That presence, uh, he could do nothing, but his fatherly presence made present the Father, whose only word was spoken in silence and must be received in silence, as our Father John of the Cross tells us. Uh, and who is worth more than all the spoken words in the history of the world. I've also experienced Father Cyril's fatherhood in slightly less grave circumstances, if you will. Uh, this past fall, when my family was dropping me off, we went to Devani's for dinner, and uh, halfway through, I was waiting for my pizza, my phone rings, and I think, oh, it's Father Cyril. What's up, Father? How are you doing? It's like, oh, I just went checking you, Kenny, make sure you made it up to St. Paul safely. Very good, very good. Well, uh, my blessings and a, a, a good semester to you. Like, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. Just, just to have that that desire to reach out to me, even though I'm a couple hundred miles away. Uh, Father Cyril's presence also brings with it a levity and a joy. Uh, he has an incredible gift of an affirming sense of humor. In every encounter with Father Cyril, one is lifted up and imbued with joy, whether it be through his radiant and contagious smile or his playful jests. Uh, some of my earliest memories of Father Cyril are, uh, he had a habit of after mass when greeting the faithful, he would squeak his nose to make the children laugh. Uh, and our relationship has progressed uh, substantially. Recently, we were having breakfast uh, in, the, in the kitchen. I prefaced one of my digressions with a long well, to which he replied, that's a deep subject. <laughs> <laughs> ah! One final petal in this blossom of Father Cyril's fatherhood is his humanness. He's very down to earth very relatable. He's not afraid to celebrate his German heritage with a good pint of beer. Uh, but he, re he enjoys fishing. He always, when we ever, whenever we go out, he always beats me in fishing. Uh, apparently, it's a uh, character of ordination that not only does it make you a fisher of men, but it makes you a better fisher than, uh, better fisher than most men. <laughs> so I'm thoroughly looking forward to that character someday. <laughs> But in conclusion, all I can say is that I'm truly honored and, and grateful to God that he's placed Father Cyril in my life. 
I'm humbled and at the same time exhilarated at the thought of someday sharing a priestly and religious vocation with this great man. And in the spirit of Elisha, who begged of our spiritual father, Elijah, that he might receive a double portion of his spirit, I too dare to hope and pray that God may grant me a double portion of the spirit of Father Cyril. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.